I'm going to use the A word here, accountability. <laughs> How do you feel about accountability? Do you, do you think that, that community is necessary to keep a person accountable to another person? All I have to do is ask you, how often do you go by a cop on the road and want to take him out to lunch? You know, everybody's driving safer when the cop's behind them or behind the billboard or whatever. But accountability is not about community. It's not about friendship. We, we postured the Matthew 18 language in the 1 Corinthians 5, and we called it accountability. Scripture doesn't. Scripture says we're accountable to God. That's where my accountability lies. Once we start making ourselves accountable to each other and to the community, then we have, again, we've distorted these relationships. It's not now about love and affection and care and concern. It's about guarding each other and guarding me from you if you start doing wrong stuff and using the community's benefits as an incentive for people to do what's right or we'll kick you out. And I think everything Matthew 18 and 1 Corinthians 5 talks about is really an expression of love. If I love you and you're astray or caught in something sinful, then I'm going to come to you and seek to restore you. And Love does all of that. We don't need accountability. And I know many congregations have staked their whole reason for being on accountability structures and keeping people true to the faith. And I think it's the wrong discussion to have because then you're not a community. People in an accountability environment, people learn to hide. In a love environment, people will be genuine and be open, even open with their struggles. And then you can really help each other. You can really do the 1 Corinthians 7, Matthew 18 stuff. So I, I just think, and I know it, it really ticks people off when I say that, because they just learned that local congregation is all about accountability, and that's what it provides. And if we don't have accountability, if we can't kick people out, then we can't do the church. And that's good. Well, I, I just don't see Scripture having that angst over accountability we were told to love one another as I have loved you. That we were clearly told to do. I can't find anywhere in Scripture where it asks me to hold you accountable or asks you to hold me accountable. And I honestly, I've been in a lot of accountability groups in my younger days. I've never seen people change in an accountability group because it's not through accountability that we change. It's through love that we transform. And accountability is a conformity-based process. It's trying to get you to do what's right even if you don't want to by some external punishment or reward. That's accountability. Transformation, the inside out, is a love-based reality. People sin because they don't know they're loved. And when they know they're loved, they'll live differently in the world. So that's what I know about my own sin and struggle. Wherever I sin, have anxiety, fear, struggle, what I know is something about God's love I don't know. If I knew it, those things wouldn't even be temptations to me. So that's where I want. I want to draw deeper, and I pray that prayer all the time. Father, what is it about your love I don't know? that if I knew it, I wouldn't act that way in that situation. And that, to me, is the growing edge of transformation. And it's such a more beautiful process than conformity and accountability that I don't know why anybody does that. Everybody even uses that language. I, I think you're hard-pressed to say you really know God as Father and really know what it is to live in the love of God and always talk about accountability and following the rules and kicking people out. I just say, something about God you've missed. You might go back and have a look. What would you say?